Hey everyone, hope you've had an amazing week and an absolutely fantastic Christmas. I really hope the weather's been good enough that if you've had a bike or anything outdoor related, you've actually managed to go out and use it. Now, if you're a mountain biker or just have some interest in mountain biking, you may have seen that mullet bikes have become a thing. Now that UCI have allowed mixed wheel sizes, downhill racers, enduro riders are experimenting with 29 inch wheels on the front and 27 and a half on the back. Now I've never seen this done on a trials bike and seeing though we've got plenty of different size wheels lying about the flat, I thought I'd give it a go. Except rather than a 29 inch front, 27 back, I've gone for a 26 inch front and a 24 in the rear. Now because the Hex is designed for 26 inch wheels, it obviously has longer chainstays than the 24 inch models that Inspired do. However, the very older Inspired models did actually have this length chainstay, which is about 380 mil. So will it ride any good? Will I feel any different? Will it ride like a 24 inch or like a 26 inch? Who knows? Let's try some stuff and see how it feels. <laughs> no, it's weird. Oh, definitely weird. It pops a lot quicker, let's put it that way. Whoa. Right, it's business time. Slippery. that from the bottom of the barrel. All right, so first impressions. When I first rode it, it definitely felt like it squat down at the back. Felt like my feet were a little bit lower. The head angle did feel ever so slightly slacker, but got used to it pretty damn quickly. Now that I've ridden around on it, it actually feels pretty normal. I thought the longer chain stays with the smaller wheel, it'd feel pretty bad on the back wheel, but no, it feels pretty much exactly the same. The one thing I have found different is maybe static gaps are a little bit harder. I think that's because you've got a smaller room for error with your wheel wrapping around the corner. You have to be a lot better with your timing. So maybe 26 inch wheels are better for gaps, but doing the spin on this block here, I'd say the smaller rear wheel does make the back ends you know, flick around just a little bit easier. So yeah, it's actually not that bad. And speaking of spins, that took quite a few attempts. I'm now gonna try a manual 180 on this block because that's something I really struggle with and I'm wondering whether the smaller wheel will make that a bit easier. I'm still not thinking it's gonna be easy. This is gonna take a while, so I may as well start now. I've only got maybe an hour and a half of light left. Oh, why do I do this? Well, I still suck at manual 180s despite the smaller rear wheel, I think actually making it a little bit easier. Despite my best attempts, I still had to put a bit of a foot down. I don't think that uphill landing 
really help me in any way. Now I would actually try and get that a little bit nicer but my back started to hurt so I called it a day. Today's a new day, Christmas has gone and by the time you watch this New Year will have gone. I did plan to get this video out in between Christmas and New Year but you know family stuff, bad weather, didn't make it happen so today's a new day and by the time you're watching this new year will have happened so I hope you had an absolutely amazing one. I've come to the wet weather spot despite it actually being quite a nice day because I want to ride on some of these blocks and see what it's like to up to back wheel to just generally spin to back wheel stuff like that so yeah my arm's getting tired holding this camera let's get to it. with the smaller rear wheel. Still a scary gap, but it sent it pretty nicely. It's actually riding pretty well. Now one advantage to the bigger wheels is kickers. So little bricks, curbs, whatever, the bigger wheels allow you to hit bigger kickers, which allow you to go bigger stuff. Now one thing I'm wondering is whether the smaller rear wheel will make kickers worse. But then again, if you've still got the big front wheel and you're hitting that against the, the curb, whatever, is that still going to have the same effect? Who knows? So I'm going to put a little brick in front of this box here and give it a try. Now this is normally fairly easy, I uh, don't have too much issue with it, so it'll be interesting to see if I can do this first try or if it takes me a while, so let's find out. It's a bit far away. I think the results are fairly clear. I'm struggling a little bit with that. Took me a while to get it. I wouldn't say it's necessarily harder, it's just a slightly different technique. I think I do prefer the bigger wheels for kickers though. Now one thing 26 inch wheels are pretty good for is hooks. I don't know whether that just because it shortens the distances between the wheels which then kind of makes the bike roll over the edge better. Either way 26 inch wheels are way better for hooks. So I've come to the slipperiest, dampest, horriblest wall I could find 
and we're going to see if the 24 inch wheel makes hooks better or worse. And to be honest, I'm not really looking forward to this, it looks horrible. Right, well hooks, to be fair, it wasn't perfect conditions. It's wet on the wall, pretty slippery, and the sun's around my eyes. But I still think it's slightly, slightly harder with the 24 inch rear wheel. I don't know whether it's because it makes the head angle slightly slacker, or it effectively makes the wall slightly smaller, because you yeah, lower down. But it was just a little bit harder, but it was still very doable. I reckon there's some stuff to be done at the Anderson Estate, so let's head over there now. Next test, going to see what it's like to do some slightly bigger up to backs. This one I can usually do within a couple of tries. If it's a good day, I can do it first try. So let's see if the smaller rear wheel makes it easier or harder. I don't know whether it's just because I'm a bit rusty, eating too much over Christmas, but yeah, I did find that a little bit harder. It's almost as if the back end squats in quicker, so your reaction time has to be way faster. Still doable, obviously, but I think it is a little bit easier with the bigger wheels. That's the weirdest 360. <laughs> Does it 360 well? Yeah, it does actually. So that's been a good couple of days testing out the Mullet Trials bike. Now conclusion time. Is it any good should you go out and do it yourself? Well, firstly, full disclosure, I thought this was gonna be absolutely rubbish. The longer chain stays on the older inspired four plays didn't make the bikes ride as well as the newer ones and I thought this bike was going to ride just really badly on the back wheel. Now in reality I'm used to this length of chain stay, I don't think my hex is bad on the back wheel, in fact I think it's very good on the back wheel and yeah this is still as good on the back wheel so I was completely wrong there, it didn't ruin the ride. It actually felt pretty normal and actually felt pretty good in certain situations. Firstly, let's talk about some of the advantages of the mullet bike. Firstly, if you're out on a group ride, maybe your friends are riding 24 inch wheels and you happen to break your rear wheel, it's safe in the knowledge that you can put one of your friends 24 inch rear wheels, maybe ask them first, and your bike will still ride pretty well. The main thing I've noticed when riding is it makes the bike a little bit more nimble. It makes the back end react just a little bit faster. So for spins, the back end comes around a lot nicer and just general nibbly stuff the bike reacts a lot quicker with the 24 inch rear wheel. I can see this being an advantage for someone who finds the hex maybe a little bit too sluggish, maybe they're not quite tall enough, they're kind of in between sizes and they just want to make their bike just a little bit more nimble. Going to a 24 inch rear wheel is actually quite a good option. A mullet hex could be that missing link between the foreplay and the hex if you're not too sure what you want to ride. Now what are the disadvantages? Well, I find some trials moves a little bit harder, gaps I found were a little bit harder, side hops maybe it's a little bit harder as well, hooks maybe slightly harder but not too bad. So it depends what you want to do with your bike, if you want to do more trousy stuff, I say stick with a 26 inch, if you wanted to do more spins and you want to make your bike a little bit more nimble, going down to a 24 inch is actually a pretty good option. Now am I personally going to stick with a 24 inch rear wheel? Nah, I like the 26 inch for my trialsy type of moves. Plus, light bicycle don't make a 24 inch rear wheel, so I need to get my wheel back on here ASAP. Chris King hopes, light bicycle rim. Perfect. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been surprising to me. It actually was a way better riding bike than I thought it was going to be. 
I'm keen to know what you guys would like me to do next. Maybe a 24 inch wheel on the front to see if it works as a alternative to a four play. I could even go crazy and put like a 20 inch wheel on the front. Maybe put some mountain bike forks, go for 27 and a half on the front. Or even stupider still, put like BMX bars on. If you have any ideas, let me know and I'll see if I can do them. I don't normally say this, but apparently it does help get subscribers. Like, comment, subscribe if you like the video. Merch available at andyclarkson.com and also if you want to see longer videos uploaded when they're done rather than waiting until Friday, then follow me on my Patreon, which is just Patreon forward slash Ali Clarkson. Anyway, have an absolutely fantastic week and I will catch you next time. Who knows what I get up to? I don't even know. See you later, everyone. Bye-bye.